The Indian River is a 121 mile brackish lagoon on the east coast of Florida. It is part of the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway that runs all the way up to Maine. It was originally named Rio de Ice after the Ice Indian tribe who lived along the east coast in Florida. It is one of the most biodiverse estuaries in the northern hemisphere and is home to more than 4,300 species of plants and animals. In the distance we see the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. Today's location is at the very base of the St. Lucie Inlet where the St. Lucie River, Indian River, and Atlantic Ocean meet. All around the Indian River are mangrove forests which act as nurseries for fish and other marine life. A frequent visitor to the Indian River is the manatee, the closest living relative to the elephant. They're attracted inland when the weather gets cold and also for the plant life. Here this manatee is attracted to a fisherman's fresh water from rinsing his boat. From the dock we spot a checkered puffer fish. This is one type of fish that has four front teeth that form a hard beak. This makes it easy for it to crush shells of crustaceans and mollusks. Puffer fish do not have scales but instead have spines. This makes them very sensitive to different types of water. Pufferfish inflate when they are scared as you see while this local fisherman has caught one, but he's sure to throw it back as they are highly poisonous. Now we step off the dock and we're ready to go underwater. There was a strange object that we witnessed from the dock so we're going to investigate and see what it was. Here I come up on it and it looks like the head of a bull shark. This bull shark was completely devoured except for its head. You can see just the two fins on the side and the head. I'll pull it up out of the water here to get a better look. You can see it was probably about five feet long when it was alive. Here you can see it has several rows of teeth and bull sharks are the most aggressive shark and they have the most testosterone of any animal on earth. They are also one of the few sharks that can swim in both brackish water and salt water, which is why we find it here in the Indian River Lagoon. Now we enter into the roots of the mangroves. You can see oysters are fastened to the bottom of the roots. They use this area as a place to feed on small fish that make their nurseries here. Here we see a blue sponge. And as we go further into the mangroves, right now I spot a small sheephead. It's a baby sheephead, normally a saltwater fish, making a nursery here in the lagoon. A minute waltz of a nursery of fish in the tide. Now we head over to explore under the bulkhead. We see all sorts of colorful plant and animal life. It looks very alien. These small fish have made a home out of this sponge, which is a living animal. We startled something, could have been possibly a stingray. It's our lucky day, we spotted a southern stingray. These rays use their mouths to blow water at the ground and remove sand and find prey. They use their pectoral fins to glide through the water and escape predators. They also have a protection with a venomous barb on the back of their tails. These ray, which are related to sharks, range from New Jersey all the way down to Brazil. 
This entire ecosystem is dependent on the red mangrove, one of three types of mangroves that grow in Florida. Mangroves have a specialized ability to be resistant to salt and they can actually drink the brackish water with their roots. The roots grow from the branches which act as a support system in mid-air and can grow up to five meters long down into the water. Here you can get a view of what the roots look like growing down from the branches into the Indian River. Mangroves are one of the most important components of ecosystems around the world in tropic and subtropical regions because of their specialized skill set. Now I'm going to take us further out into the rocky region of the seawall area of the Indian River Lagoon. You start to see more colorful tropical fish and shellfish that nestle into the rocks. Here we see some hermit crabs who seem to have found a nice home here against the edge of the shallows of the seawall. In these rocks is a community of various tropical fish. We see sergeant majors, grunt fish, also banded rudderfish, and many others. Swimming past here we see banded rudderfish, grunt fish, and now in the bottom right we see sheep's head. Sheep's head have extremely bizarre looking teeth that resemble that of human teeth. They use it to crush shells and dig on the sides of barnacles. As we get deeper in the water we see the sheep's head swimming there to the right. We start to see different groups of French grunt fish and also blue grunts and various other tropical fish and growth along the rocks, including these blue sponges, seem to be more prevalent. You see a hermit crab there as well, and much more of the shellfish growing everywhere. Many of these fish co-mingle in different caverns in the rocks. Here you see the sheep's head retreat into a little cave there. There's probably several types of fish all living underneath in the same area in little coves. That was a red mangrove snapper that just swam by there quickly and a small school of fish swimming past the oysters there. This yellow and black fish is called the Sergeant Major. They're one of the more beautiful and striking tropical fish in the area. There's multiple species of sponges. We have blue sponge, red sponge, and orange sponges all growing in the same area together along with algae and various plant life. A small goby fish has made this blue sponge's home. Here again we see Sergeant Major fish. They were named after their stripes which look like the Sergeant Major insignia in the military. They actually clean green sea turtles of parasites and goby fish clean them of parasites, which is a pretty interesting symbiotic relationship between three species. 
And now approaching the Sergeant Major, we see mangrove red snappers. They're an ambush predator. They hide in the mangrove roots and rocks to create the element of surprise when hunting their prey. It seems I'm kind of getting close to the shoreline here, so I'm going to head back in the other direction now. Following the corrugated steel of the seawall back towards the mangroves, I come across a large school of small, either sardines or glass minnows. I can feel the current pulling me, and you see the fish use the tide as a sort of avenue, much like a highway. Now I see this bright red fish. It's unidentified. If anybody knows what it is, please leave a comment below. Now here's a surprise. This is a really large scallop and it has an orange sea sponge growing on its mouth. Now, I can't resist. I gotta reach down and touch it to see if it's alive here. Oh, it's alive. Whoa, now there's a school of glass minnow. They get their name because their scales reflect sunlight and make them shimmer in the water like glass. I'm not sure what these black growths are on the side of the seawall. They could be a fungus, an animal, or a plant. We see some type of branching sponge. Now this is a really interesting dwelling of diverse fish. The tide is kind of pushing me away from it, so I'm going to try and circle back around to it. Wow, now look at that guy. Let's get a better look at these. They live in this cave here. They're have a dorsal fin on the top of their head in a rectangle shape. These are actually spotted drumfish. They're a popular tropical fish among saltwater aquariums. This is a surprise to see them here in the Indian River. This 
Spotted drumfish hang out all day by their caves, and then at night they go out to feed on crustaceans and sea worms. You can see here that they share their dwelling with a small sheephead and some type of mangrove snapper, possibly more fish inside. This is an example of cohabitation where fish use strength in numbers to protect themselves from predators. But rather than a school, these are various different species of fish living together in the same cave. Here again we spot our unidentified friend. Along this pipe is growing the type of seagrass that manatees love and I've seen them in this exact area feeding. You see these small fish with the orange and blue with the black spot on their tail? Those are baby pork fish another type of grunt fish. Grunt fish and pork fish are both named after the noises that they make, especially when being caught by fishermen. They make grunts and snorts, and of course pork fish sound like a pig. They get much larger and become bright orange, and you'll see in future videos the full adults out in the coral reef in the ocean. The adult pork fish are very striking and beautiful, very curious, and some of my favorite to encounter out in the reef. These small ones were very hard to identify at first, but the spot on the tail gave it away. Now we're starting to make our way back to the mangrove forest. You could see the branches from fallen roots all around us, and we're getting closer back to the dock where we started. Ahead here I see a fragment of a sea turtle shell, the bottom of the shell. That's one segment from either a green sea turtle or a loggerhead. They live in this river and also in the ocean. This is one of the few places on earth, the surrounding beaches where they both lay their eggs, and also even the leatherback turtle. And now we've made our way back to the mangrove roots at the edge of the water here back towards the dock where we started. I give one last goodbye to our little fish nursery here in the shallows and I'm about to head back up. The Indian River is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. So biodiverse, full of mystery and creatures large and small. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave comments below if you identified any creatures that I didn't mention. Our next video is going to be a dive into the worm reef off of Hutchinson Island. Thanks for watching. See you soon.